So we are right now in the midst of a crisis that's something unlike anything I've seen in my lifetime. This thing called the coronavirus has basically brought the whole world to a standstill as of right now. Um, everything is closed. Most of the businesses are closed. The ones that are open are what are considered essential services. They're operating at limited capacity. Um, hospitals are crowded with people getting tested for coronavirus. The unemployment rate is as high as it's been since the uh, Great Depression. But planes aren't flying internationally. You can't even drive in many places across state borders. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's really just got the whole world crippled in fear and uncertainty. Nobody knows what's coming next. And um, it's, a, it's a, probably the most, probably the closest thing to a world war or a, a serious epidemic that has ever happened in my lifetime. The Apostle John said 2,000 years ago, little children, this is the last hour. And as Reinhard Bonnke said, if that was the last hour 2,000 years ago, then we are today living in the last second of the last minute of the last hour. And so if it was always important to preach the gospel, how much more at this time in history? And what's interesting is that as we come close to the end of the age, which is really what I believe is, is happening now, um, God has provided us with all kinds of incredible opportunities and tools that we can use to preach the gospel, technology that enables us to have a, a video that goes up and a million people see it within a few hours. Something like that has never been here before. There are now airplanes where we can get in and fly to other continents in a few hours. Um, we, we can speak to more people, as, as I've done many times in Africa, speak to more people in one setting than the Apostle Paul ever saw alive on the earth during his lifetime. These are really, really incredible days. They are also the last days. And I believe that from the beginning of time, God knew the generation that would be alive in this hour. And God could have allowed any generation to live at this time. It could have been Wesley's generation. It could have been Finney's generation. It could have been uh, Martin Luther's generation. It could have been the disciples' generation, but it's ours. And that's not a mistake. We are here for a reason. We have an assignment that is divine. It is historic. And we must work while it is day. That's what Jesus said. The night is coming when no man can work and we must work while it is day. And I feel like even with this crisis, with the coronavirus, we've had the opportunity to experience just a little taste of what it's like when the night comes. I mean, think of it right now, everything's closed. I can't get on a plane and go to Africa and preach right now, even if I wanted to. A few weeks ago, I was, I was complaining about how much I had been on the road and how difficult it was and how, uh, just how tired I was. And today, I couldn't go do those things if I wanted to. This is what Jesus was saying was, while you have the opportunity, while the door is open, while the day is still upon us, work because night is coming. People often ask, ask us, ask me, why are you guys pushing so hard? We go to Africa relentlessly. We have offices in 12 nations and six continents. And we're always pushing, always working, always spending, always going. And this is the reason. Reinhardt would always say, say to us, this window that's open for us in Africa, it is not forever. It has not always been open and it won't always be open. While it's open, we have to go. We have to preach, we have to press in. And, um, and I, I see, even in this moment, I see the wisdom of that. And, and uh, I think it applies to all of us that in these times, the night is coming. We need to work while it's day.